appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, how weird is this? I feel like I'm like in the Backstreet Boys or something with this microphone. I've never done this before, so bear with me. Okay. Uh, today, I want, I'm really excited about this presentation. I want to talk to you guys about how a quarterback should approach a spread option scheme within your offense, okay? Because spread option schemes give you so many opportunities and so many things on any given play, you really have to take full advantage of it. Because when you do, when you have a quarterback that's really good at it, it puts defenses in pickles. It's really, really hard for them. You have the opportunity to make a defense play the entire field. And if you, if, and when you start doing these things, whether it's throwing RPOs or throwing quick game concepts within your running scheme, or throwing screen concepts within your running schemes, you can change defenses. You can change the way they align, you can change the coverages that they play, okay? And I'm excited about it because it's actually something I learned not too long ago. My background as a quarterback has been in pro style. I was pro style in high school, I was pro style in college. Okay, so I really didn't have a full-time spread experience until I got to Europe. And I definitely didn't work in the spread zone until I got to the Raiders. Okay, so when I first got there, I got there in January, the season started in March, I started watching old film. I started watching the quarterbacks prior to me. How did they operate? How did they operate this bread and butter, this base of our offense? And what I realized is we were leaving a lot of things. We weren't taking advantage of some things, some opportunities, right? We were letting the defense not cover areas of the field, not play alignment in the way that I think they should, okay? So I was like, awesome, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna be fucking awesome. All right, you don't have to, I, I cuss a little bit, I saw it, I don't want to I don't want to offend anybody, and I don't want to make it hard for my man translating back here, but uh, hey, German, I just, classes. yeah, nobody wants to hear that, <laughs> nobody wants to hear that, all right? So, I was like, man, we're going to tear people up, this is, this is awesome, I have so many options on any given play. Well, first game, we go to Vienna, Oyavata, I don't play very well. And I remember watching film with Lee, like, hey. Why the hell did you not do this? Why didn't you throw this in this situation? Why didn't you throw this screen? Why didn't you throw this quick game? And I realized it's not that easy. It's really not that easy. It takes experience, okay? But through learning it, there, it's become easier for me and I would love to share that with you guys, okay? So, it really comes down to three different things, right? What are we looking at pre-snap, right? How can we take advantage of the alignment of the defense? How can we take advantage of the depth of the safeties? How can we take advantage of the number of people in the box? Okay, these are all things that I want to look at pre-snap and take advantage of, okay? And then we're going to talk about the mesh technique a little bit, right? How we teach it at the Raiders. Uh, when to give, when to pull on the mesh technique. Also, also, not only when you're reading a C-gap defender, but also when you're reading linebackers and RPOs, okay? And then once you pull it, if you pull it, what the hell do you do with it then? It's kind of what we're going to go over, okay? Because some people make great reads, pull the ball, and then they go nowhere. They don't do anything with it, all right? So these are the things we're going to talk about. Pre-snap rules. When we, when we decide to throw a quick game concept, or we decide to throw, and what I mean by throw a quick game concept, I don't mean uh, I get to play in and it's, hey, Sean, it's all hitches. No, it's inside zone blocking, or any type of blocking scheme where you read an end or read a backer where you have a responsibility within the blocking scheme and you adjust off of that, okay? It's not full slide protection, and I'll throw away a stick concept. It's we have inside zone, we have counter, we have whatever the case, whatever blocking scheme in front of me, it's a run first priority play, and we end up throwing it because of what you see pre-snap, okay? And what I want to do is I want to look at the leverage of the outside linebackers. Do I out leverage them with my slot receivers? And the depths of the safeties. Can the safeties come up and make an immediate impact on my quick game concept or my screen concept? Okay? Can I get the ball to my receiver and allow him to have the ability to make a play in space? Or is he going to catch it and get smoked? Okay? These are the things I want to look at. Why? Why would I throw these? Why wouldn't I just inside zone? All right, yep, Lee, thank you, super. I'll run inside zone, everyone, whatever you call it. Why would I throw it? Why would I abort the run concept to throw a screen or a quick game concept? It's, I always, I feel like my job on these concepts is to create a lighter box for my running back. The Swagger Raiders have really good running backs. Really good. And a really good O-line. I want to make their job easier. I want to create light boxes. I want to create six-man, five-man boxes at times. So we can take advantage of the run game. That's my job in the run game. That's my job. 
pre, excuse me, pre-snap. And I take a lot of pride in that, and I, and I want to show you guys some examples. I'm going to go through these examples really quick, because I try to give you everything, uh, every example that I could have thought of, and clips of it. If you have questions, we'll talk about that after lunch, and we'll talk about every example more, more in detail. So if, if it seems like I'm flying through these, it's because I am, okay? So examples, some examples of it, okay? This is my first year against the Vikings. All right, we have an inside zone concept with all hitches, okay? Not my favorite concept, but something we used to do quite regularly, okay? So when I look pre-snap, what I'm thinking is, okay, I want to look on my leverage of my outside backers. Does my slot out leverage these guys? Can I get outside of them? Can I throw around them? Can I make them get further away from the box on future run plays by throwing these concepts? And can I get these safeties to creep down because I'm throwing these concepts, okay? Does this safety have the ability right now to make an immediate impact on my hitch? That's what I'm looking at, okay? And also, what happens oftentimes with defense, I know it's hard to see, but to the boundary, the corner plays weaker, right? You want to, a lot of defenses like to put that wheel back in the box, play softer with that corner, okay? Can I take advantage of that? Can I make the defense cover the weak flats on first and 10, right? So these are the things I want to look at. Here, I see this, so I don't mesh, I step off, and I just throw the hitch. Now I know a lot of you are probably thinking a good quarterback would have thrown it to this guy and you guys are right, but you know, bear with me, okay? Bear with me, all right? That was one of those things you go back on film, you're like, what the hell was I thinking? How did I not see that? But regardless, this is a first and 10 play. I can, I can pull out, throw a pitch, which should be a 99% completion throw. He catches it, we get eight yards, and the old grumpy British man on the sideline is a happy guy. He gets to call a play from second and two. Okay, so tight view a little bit. Okay, this is what I mean. When we're into the boundary, a lot, a lot of times teams like to put that wheel close to the box. Get that six man in the box, right, on spread teams. Get that six man in the box, help that run support. I want to prevent that. I want them to either play the safety, uh, roll the safety week to take away some of this stuff or play a harder corner. And that opens up things later uh, down the line in the passing game, okay? So this is an example I just want to show. It doesn't have to be a spectacular play. Again, this is a first and 10. This is a first and 10 play. We just have a motion. It's inside zone with, a, with a, basically a bubble screen to the running back, okay? Now pre-snap, I like my numbers to the field, right? But in game planning, we knew when we motioned it, they were gonna peel, okay? But I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, they're bringing down a safety week, they're bringing down the wheel week, right? and they're just playing man, one-on-one, off man on the single receiver. I know I have a first and 10, I know I have an inside zone call, I'm gonna step off and throw a five yard out. Doesn't matter, right? That's a 99% that's a completion throw, catch it, get seven yards, we have second and three. Our entire playbook's open, okay? And now that puts them in pickle, they can't keep doing that. They can't keep running that defense. They have to give that guy help, play him tighter, get a guy into the flats, whatever the case may be. Either I have an opportunity to take a shot later in the game because I've created less separation between my receiver and the corner, or I've created a lighter box. And here's just an example in goal line, right? I don't particularly love the front that we're running inside zone to. I have a bubble concept to the field. I definitely don't like that, right? They have a hat on a hat. He immediately can make a play on the ball and he's apex from the box, right? I'm never gonna throw a bubble into that, right? And I don't particularly like the, the, the front for inside zone, okay? But I get a one-on-one -on -one with my single receiver. Okay, step off, throw that, don't even mesh. You can flash fake it for a second, then flip your hips and throw the quick game concept, okay? This play came in as trips left, inside zone right, bubble screen, right? And then we throw a fade for a touchdown. I don't have to audible, I don't have to change anything. It's built into the play. It's built into the play. Pre-snap, pre-snap you see it, and there's the signal that I have to change now. And 
It's, but it's built into the play. Step off, was everybody's blocking inside zone. Step off and throw it, okay? Uh, we're gonna start speeding through these because I think you guys get the point. Again, middle of the field, first and 10. Will wants to stay in the box. Excuse me. Will wants to stay in the box. Safety wants to play deep. I like what I have over there, step and throw, okay? Ideally a better throw, but I'll take 70 yards on first down, okay? Um, yeah, that's another example. All right, here's a negative example, because believe it or not, I make mistakes. I know, I know. But, so here, my rule, right? Do I have leverage on him? And is he too deep? Well, he's definitely way too deep to make an immediate impact, but I don't really think I have leverage on that guy. Right, he comes out with the motion, I don't, I don't see it, or I just don't look. I throw it, now this guy makes the play. Right? I still get three yards, fine. But that's not really the idea behind it. That guy removed himself on the, out of the box on my motion, so I created a lighter box. So this should be a play where I, I, I go into the zone read. I shouldn't throw this pre-snap. This was a mistake, okay? Not really the idea behind it, right? We're watching 95, he's already outside the end a little bit, okay? Motion, he scoots out, we should be running this inside zone. This is an opportunity where I should not throw the ball, okay? Same thing here, right? This is my guy. Do I have leverage on him? Yes, but not great leverage, right? He's already removed himself from the box. He's already outside the defensive end, okay? They're already prepared for the stuff that we've already done, right? So this is not a great opportunity to catch and throw. Now I do because the snap's not great, but look, they're in, they're in position to swallow this up. Again, maybe we get three, four yards, which isn't the worst case in the world worst scenario in the world, but this doesn't, I did not put us in the best success, uh, position to succeed on this play, in my opinion. Now it helps when you just have great athletes, it doesn't matter, but, but my job is to put him in the best position to succeed and I did not do that. I did not do that on that play, in my opinion, okay? Uh, same thing here, this is another, right? Same, same scenario that we saw with the Grouch Giants, right? They wanna keep this guy in the box, Right, he's deep, he's not gonna make a median impact. This is an opportunity where I could pick up and throw this ball. I don't, and everything works out because I'm fortunate enough to be surrounded by phenomenal athletes. But I did not put Sandro, our running back, in the best position, I did not put the offense in the best position, position to succeed in my opinion, okay? That's a scenario where you could pick up and throw the key one and move, move on. And then they'll have to decide what to do later. They'll have to decide, either play him tighter, roll him down, bump him out, whatever the just adjustment they have to make. But I want them to force them to make that adjustment, okay? So, now, you, you get to the stance, you don't like what you see pre-snap, right? You don't like the throw, whether it's a quick game concept, whether it's a screen, okay? So, you're gonna go, okay, I'm running the inside zone, okay? The way we teach the inside zone is you're gonna pivot off your play side foot. You're not gonna gain a lot of ground with that. You know, I, I see some quarterbacks really like to gain ground and create their mesh and get their mesh close to the line of scrimmage. Kyle does that, the quarterback I do before me, and he's phenomenal at it. I'm not, so I don't do that, okay? It makes it harder for the quarterbacks. You're, you're, you're changing your mesh point and making it closer to the line of scrimmage, okay? So I wanna keep my mesh point around four yards because I'm not very good at reading ends. I want to give myself time, all right? And I want to give myself space, okay? Um, what's really, really important, when I work with young quarterbacks or inexperienced quarterbacks, especially in this technique, they always have the tendency to look at the running back. You don't need to look at the running back, ever, 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 ever. That's what Mesh is for. He knows exactly where the ball is going to be. You know exactly where he's going to be. There's no need to look at him. Look at your read, always, whether it's a linebacker, whether it's a C-gap defender, whoever it is, your eyes go straight to your read. Straight to your read. Doing zone mesh, you do that every day in indies, it becomes rote memorization, it becomes muscle memory. You don't have to look at the running back. You don't have to make sure where he is. It's just a comfort thing, it's something you need to look at. But as soon as you push the ball back and your eyes go backwards, that's half a second you don't know where the read is. And you don't know what he's doing, okay? That's super, super important. Eyes go straight to the read. Push the ball backwards. Create a longer mesh. All right? Put the ball in the belly of the running back. Okay? And then, for me, when I, when I run this, I try to make my decision by the front hip. 
So if I pivot, I push the ball backwards, I ride my mesh by the front hip, I want to make a decision. Now quarterbacks can ride further, uh, but that takes a lot of talent and a lot of skill and a lot of experience in this technique in doing this. Okay? I want to make a decision by the front hip. Okay? Also, what I didn't have on here that, that's also very important is if, if you give a pull no matter what, you replace your running back's feet with your feet. Right? It's a one step thing. If I'm riding the mesh, I decided here, give or pull, my next step is here. I'm down the line. I'm replacing that C gap defender if it is a pull read, right? If, if he's attacked the, attacked the running back or attacked the mesh point uh, horizontally towards the center, towards the midline, I want to pull and attack where he was. If I have to pull and run sideways to get away from my read, probably not a very good read. Probably should have gave him, right? So I want very little steps. It's here. And I'm attacking, I'm replacing the running back feet with my feet. So I, I, I'm, I guarantee to go downhill. I want to attack vertically, not horizontally. Okay? So this is our, uh, this is our second team quarterback. Okay, just to give you guys an example of how we teach it. On this, I think he over rotates a little bit. We don't have to, we don't have to pivot this foot. We don't have to. Okay? A lot of people do, it's more comfortable. But the way Lee taught it to me is you drive, you gotta simulate like you've driven, you screwed your foot into the ground. You've driven, you screwed that, that play side foot to the ground and you're just pivoting off of it. You don't have to pick it up and put it down. Now if you do, it's not the end of the world, I'm sure I do a little bit as well, but that's the general concept behind it. You don't wanna get, you don't wanna lose depth with that. You just wanna pivot to your mesh point, okay? Now he's over rotated here, okay? When we, when we run inside zone, our running backs are expected to push opposite A gap. Well, they can't push opposite A gap if I close them off, if I over rotate my feet. I have to stay open at a 45 degree angle. Okay? So he's over rotated here a little bit. Okay? Now, his eyes aren't to the read, they're just to the ground because it's not a read, but he never looks at the running back. Okay? Here's a better example. Okay? Eyes go straight to the read. Straight to the read. Push the ball back, pivoting off play side foot. He does a better job staying open this time. A better job staying open. Pushing the ball back, look in the read. Front hip, make a decision. When you make a decision, replace the running back's feet with yours. He kind of pulled it a bit earlier. But see how he places him, it's straight downhill. There's no bowing out, there's no going horizontal, it's straight downhill, right where the C gap defender, who your read was, or where, where he was. Where he, were, where he was? English. Ha! Are you going to translate that whole thing? No. Okay. It would be funny if you did. Okay? So, when to pull, when to give. Okay? If you're reading the C-gap defender, if it's a normal zone read, if you're reading the edge defender, okay? You want to give it when the, when the, now this might seem simple, but it's, people still screw it up, myself included. When the defender's momentum is straight up field, give every time. Give. Now, that doesn't happen very often if you play pretty high level football. If a defensive end's unblocked, he's not going to just run straight upfield. But you'd be surprised. Defensive lineman is stupid. So, so no offense to any other defensive lineman here besides Jermaine. No, you should try. Yeah. That's a good point. You can not. That's better, probably. I don't want to get met in the parking lot. All right? If he's straight at the mesh, it's a give. If you see both of his numbers, and they're running straight at the mesh point, if they're running straight at you and your running back, that's a give read. Most DNs are not athletic enough to have the momentum at the mesh point, see a give, and bend and make a play. It's really, really difficult. Really, really difficult. If they're running right at you, that's probably because they play, they have the quarterback. All right, and there'll be an example of this, where a 280-pound guy smokes me, because he just, I, I have quarterback on this. And he doesn't bend, he, doesn't, he runs right at the mesh. That's a give. That's a give, okay? The last one is if he has flat feet, right? If he comes off the ball, he sees he's unblocked, and he just shows hands, flat feet. That's a give read. If you pull it and replace your running back's feet, and re you can't replace the C-gap defender because he's still standing there. You're going to run right into his ass, okay? That's a give read. Let your running back work. That's the toughest read. Like when, when C gap defenders come here, get square and squeeze, squeeze down, that's a tough read, but that's a give read. 
every time because if they're if they're flat, if they don't turn their shoulders to the midpoint of the play, they can come here and still come flat and play you. And then that defeats the whole purpose of the play. Okay? Make sense? Some examples real quick? Oh, yeah, I forgot to put that in there. RPOs, if you're reading linebackers, it's a little bit different. If you're reading linebackers, it's a little bit different, okay? When you're reading linebackers on an RPO, right? First of all, pre-snap, you're not, you're not only deci deciding if you're just throwing it or not, you're also deciding if this guy doesn't move, what's my decision, okay? So if I have leverage on him pre-snap, but not enough to just throw it and just give up on the run or just don't do the run, then I'm deciding, it's like, okay, if he doesn't move, it's a throw. Or if he doesn't move, it's a give, because he's so wide. Because that's what, that's what linebackers, especially at the Raiders, what we do, and I got pretty good at it because I practice against it all the time, the ball will be snapped and the linebackers just don't move for a second. So you're sitting there, you're like, oh, what the fuck, you know, do something. You know what I mean? Like, why aren't you moving? So what, what happened is you just develop it, and it's like, well, if he doesn't move, is that their technique? Or if he just freezes? Well, because of leverage, because he's removed from the box already, I'm gonna give it. Or if he's a B-gap player and he's in the box, if he doesn't move, I'm gonna throw it, okay? And then, and then if they do move, if they move laterally away from the play, right? If he's trying to get the hook to curl or something, even though you're showing uh, run mesh, it's a give, right? If he, if he moves away from the mesh, if he gets depth, it's a give, okay? Basically, where if he's trying to play pass first, it's a give, in a nutshell, okay? Now, if he's trying to play run, if he triggers, if he squeezes in, or if he triggers, oh, that's my thing, oh. That makes it so much easier. I don't have to. So anyways, if he's, <laughs> I'm learning up here as we're going, boys. <laughs> All right, so if he comes downhill, or if he squeezes toward the middle of the play, it's a pull. It's a pull, replace that defender, not with yourself, with the passing concept. Okay, make sense? Okay, couple, couple examples. How am I doing on time? My watch died. Not great, not great timing. Okay, so. We're running, we're running zone left here, okay? Here's my read, okay? He's gonna come off the ball. He's gonna shuffle, he's gonna, his momentum is stopped. It's a give, it's a give, okay? By the way, here's a good example. I flipped this play. There's initially zone spreads, uh, excuse me, zone read right. This is a scenario where I can keep zone read right on and just throw this hitch at the bottom. Just another example. First and 10, take my six yards, okay? Anyways, we get to this point, I'm at my front hip, okay, excuse me, front hip, his momentum stopped, I see both of his numbers, his shoulders are facing me, they're not turned to the midline of the play, that's a gift, okay? Now I'm gonna breeze through these guys, just so you know, okay? Tight view, okay, here's my read. Momentum straight at the mesh point, all right? Notice his shoulders are facing me. I can see both of his numbers, okay? He's not attempting to make a play on the running back. He's not turning his shoulders. He's not rotating his hips towards the midline of the play or towards the running back, okay? This is a give every time and then take a nice little pop, okay? He obviously didn't have responsibility for the running back or screwed up his responsibility in that play, okay? Here's a really shitty mesh technique, but uh, just an example of a pull. I know this is zoomed out quite a bit, but here's my read, okay? Here's something I, I want to point out. He didn't do a very good job of it, but the Raiders tackles punch with their outside arm when they climb, and as little as that sounds, it's super beneficial for the quarterbacks, especially who aren't super talented in reading defensive ends, okay? That little half a second, is super helpful, especially when it's a guy like our left tackle and he can stop people's hearts with a punch. It's super helpful because they don't have time to fuck around at that point, okay? It's like, are you responsible for the running back or are you responsible for me? And if they get punched like that and get off balance, you see them go to their spot very often instead of <laughs> and then run in and then I screw it up and then Lee yells at me, okay? So that little punch from the tackle actually makes the world a difference, okay? So here's my guy. Slightly after play, his shoulders are already turned, right? 
I can no longer see both of his numbers if he has one. Okay, that's hands down stereotype pull read. Okay, now pull, and I would go around because this is a good clinic tape on not how to not to do mesh. You see how my mesh point gets way closer to the line of scrimmage because of my footwork? It's trash, right? So when I pull it, I have to go around the end as opposed to getting vertical immediately. Okay? That's why I don't like That's another reason why I don't like it. Okay? And then your boy gets loose a little bit, Jermaine. You see that? Anyways, this isn't a highlight film, sorry. I get excited. I don't get that opportunity very often. All right? And here's an example. See that punch that I'm talking about? Now he punches. Now 14 turns his shoulder to try to get around it, but he shows me that he's trying to get inside. Because if you're content with a C-gap player as a DN, oftentimes when you get pinched, punch, you're like, okay, well, I'm still here, right? But if you're trying to fight inside, if you're trying to squeeze that gap, oftentimes it makes them turn their shoulders. And this should be a pull read, okay? And I give it anyways, and this DN makes the tackle brain and we still pick up positive yardage. But that's, that's a pull read. That's a play that I, I got a negative grade on, okay? Because that's hands down, just like the last one. He's trying to squeeze this gap. Okay? Um, yeah, this one is just the gap exchange I want to show because the outside linebacker blitzed, right? Tackle stays on the end. Now I read the outside backer. His momentum's to the mesh. Skip. Okay? Okay, so here's, a, here's, an, R, here's an RPO, okay? So we're blocking both ends. I'm reading the linebacker. Here's my conflict backer. He's my sixth guy in the box, okay? Now, he's firmly planted in a B gap. So like I said, when I'm thinking pre-snap, okay, if he doesn't move, for me, this is a throw. If he doesn't move, if he stands this, he's so far cemented into the box that if he doesn't move, I'm throwing this, okay? So here's my read again, ball snapped. I think I pre-snap throw this anyways, but he scoots in like that, I'm throwing that every time. I'm throwing it. I already have leverage, and he moved inwards. Even if it's slightly, that's enough. I'm throwing this, okay? Because we're not blocking him as an O-lineman. So if I give that, he's sitting there in the hole that my running back is supposed to go through, okay? So you throw this. Even though this guy is outside the box, he's not my read. This guy's my read. He's my read on the pass. We're throwing a double slant concept. He gets width, right? So here, get my eyes to this backer. He shows me pull read. Get my eyes here. He's turning and running. Replace that backer where he was, okay? And here's another example of a give read on an RPO. So he's, he's my guy, he's my conflict backer. He's stacked on the defensive end, so pre-snap, I'm thinking if he doesn't move, oof, that's tough, he's really flirting with the edge of the box. So this is probably gonna be a give read, okay? If he doesn't move. Now we motion, we motion across, he gets width on the snap, give, every time. Now he comes back and still makes the play, because our running back slipped a little bit and makes a pretty good play, actually. But again, this is a first and 10 play. He gets width, we get tackled, nine yard gain, okay? And that's really what it's all about. Uh, this is the last example, just a real quick, uh, you can also do it, you don't have to do it on inside zone. This is an ISO concept, okay? He's the guy we're ISOing, he's the guy I'm reading. And rather than block him, read him. Just do a quick little uh, receiver screen, okay? So when I'm meshing, my eyes are here, he doesn't move, he, then he gains into the play, pull it, throw it, first down, okay? So you can build, even if it's not inside zone spread, this is a 20 personnel ISO but you can still build RPOs into it. You can still pick on linebackers who are outside the box. Okay? Sorry, Nick. Okay, here's a good example. The tight, okay, he's inside leverage, so if he doesn't move, still might throw it, right? Still might throw it. On the mesh, eyes go straight to him, he's flat-footed, then he gains ground, pull it throw, okay? Okay, so now, you've made your read, You've done, you've done your inside zone, and you get a pull read. You get a pull read. Then what? Then what? On an RPO, it's pretty easy. Replace your, the backer that you read, just like that clip against the Giants. Pull it, throw it, replace the guy you just read, okay? Now, if it's a zone read, and you have a screen concept, or a triple option, or some type of 
uh, version of the triple option attached to that, what do you do now? Okay, well we already touched on it. Replace the C-gap defender that you read. Right, on an RPO, you replace replacing the receiver. On a normal zone read, where you're reading the C-gap defender, you replace him with yourself. Okay, you attack where he was. Okay, then you pick on the support player. Whoever that support player might be, it might be a roll down safety, it might be an outside linebacker removed from the box. Whoever it is, that's what we're attacking. We want him to make a decision and we, we react off that decision, okay? So, am I doing well on time? Are we okay? Okay, super. I'm just gonna keep going until somebody tells me to stop. Okay, or I finish. Um, so this is, this is Kyle, this is the guy I'm talking about, okay? This is a true triple option, old school, okay? Guy who doesn't get the, running back who doesn't get the ball, goes behind, becomes a pitch back. We're doing it with him because I'm not very good at it, okay? But I wanna show you, him an example because he does it really, really well. And this is what you want to teach your quarterbacks. Now granted, his mesh, see how he rides it? I would never, ever, ever do that, ever, okay? But he's really good at it, pulls at it, but when he does that, he has to go flat. That's what I don't like about it, right? You go to the tight film, he makes, he makes this guy, again, we're punching him, he's turning his shoulders because he's trying to fight inside, makes a pretty easy read, okay? We pull it, but he has to go flat here. Okay, he has to go flat, which I don't particularly like, but that's okay. That's okay. I let. Yeah, doesn't matter. He's way better at it than me, anyways. Okay, so who's my support player? Okay, oftentimes this receiver picks most dangerous with us. I know some guys like leave that support player alone. He's the quarterback's responsibility if he pulls it. For us, we just block most dangerous, almost always. Okay, almost always. So now Kyle's eyes go to the safety. He's, he's the safety trying to run alley. That's our guy, okay? We press him, press him, press him. I would like, I would, I would teach Kyle, if I were to teach Kyle on option, which I never would, attack inside shoulder. Attack inside shoulder that safety, okay? Kyle's trying to set him up because he's trying to get to the house and try to do a fake pitch. But attack the inside shoulder of the safety, okay? Don't let him run flat like this. You don't want him to run flat. You want him to come vertically downhill. Five minutes. Super, thank you. You want him to go downhill. You want him to come here, and when you pitch it, he can't run horizontally. But if you come, if you don't come flat, if, or if you come flat and you don't come downhill as the quarterback and attack him, he's able to play you inside out and then stay flat, and when you pitch it, he might be able to make a play on your pitch guy, okay? So attack him inside shoulder, make him stop his feet, or make him break down, okay? See, Kyle gets him to break down, pitch. Right there, pitch, okay? And now we have a good thing going. Okay, now we have a really nice play going, okay? Uh, here's another example of, now, it's, now it's, a, it's a trips bubble screen inside zone concept, okay? Just because it's a bubble zone or bubble screen doesn't mean I can't throw it late. Doesn't mean I can't throw it after I pull, right? There's no law against that. It just becomes the same thing that Kyle just did. It's a triple option, right? So, Read the defensive end, read the C-gap player, right? He turns his shoulder, squeeze, pull read. Okay, I attack much flatter than Kyle. Okay, I could, I'd probably throw this a tad too early. Okay, a tad too early because actually, the receiver kind of screws up here because game plan, he should, be, he should be up to here, but I should press that. You don't want to throw the ball too early. Right? You want to make him commit to you for the same reasons I just talked about, that you want him to stop his feet. You want him to chop his feet. Okay? But just because it's a bubble screen doesn't mean you can't pull it and throw it out there late. If you get leverage, it doesn't matter whether it's pre-snap or post-pull. Throw it out there. Get your athletes on the edge. Okay? Do that to first and 10, and we pick up 16 yards. Pretty happy about that. Okay? Is a, from the tight view, this guy should be either him or him. When he jumps inside, this receiver should go up to the safety, but he doesn't, okay? But here's a, a better view that I should be downhill. I should be attacking here. I should be attacking here. Hopefully I can outrun this guy. No, no guarantee these days, okay? I should be attacking here. So if he does turn and run, then I'm, I'm getting here. If he wants to stop, then we're here. Okay, it's just the, uh, it's a matter of alleys, uh, leverage and alleys, okay? Now here's a negative example, okay? Here's a negative example. Here's my C-gap defender, okay? 
He gives me a pull read. See how he turns his shoulder, even though he wasn't punched. He turns his shoulder. He's playing running back. I could do a lot better job coming, attacking. And here's my guy, right? Same thing. We should be up here. But here's my guy, right? Because he's not most dangerous to him anymore. He's most dangerous to me. That's the it's a fine line that the, slot ha the slots have to decide, okay? But I should be attacking his inside foot. Right here, he's committed to me, in my opinion. He, there's no way he's making a play on this. No way. He's not flat, he's turned his shoulders, he's turned his hips. This ball should be thrown out here every time, every single time. I just got greedy and I wanted to house this. He didn't, of course, but I wanted to. It went different in my head. But when you watch film and you're talking to your quarterback, it's like, think about this. Think about this, yeah, this is a nice little play, right? First down and I get five yards, super, that's great, right? We, we like that, four plus, first down. But man, I throw it out to, I throw it out to a platzgummer and the safety is not even in the screen, that might be an explosive play. So you just lost, you, you lost the potential and option of an explosive play because I didn't complete the play, I didn't finish it. I didn't put my guys in the best situation to succeed. A 15 yard gain, we lost 10 yards, that's on me. And that's the way I view it. And that's the way uh, I like to teach quarterbacks as well. Because we leave, when we do stuff like that, we leave yards on the field. They didn't take it away from us, we just didn't take it from them. Okay? And this is my last example, guys. This is actually a. Uh, I should take the overlays off, huh? You guys are writing down every play name. Okay, this is actually a, a, a counter concept. Ah, it doesn't matter, we change them every year. All right, this is a counter concept. Okay, this is a counter concept. So it doesn't have to be inside zone, but regardless, I'm still reading the C gap player. So for me, in all intents and purposes, it's the same technique, same reads. Okay, blocking scheme's different. Okay, I'm still reading C gap defender. Okay, his shoulders turn, he, he squeezes it. He, he doesn't turn, but he squeezes it all the way to the A gap. So I thought, and actually here we have, we have a quick game concept built into it. We have a stick concept, okay? Doesn't have to be a screen. Doesn't have to be a screen. This is a stick concept. Here's my guy, right? So when I break flat, because you break flat if you're throwing a passing concept with an unblocked D end, okay? You don't attack the line of scrimmage, you break flat. That's a small nuance, okay? This guy triggers towards me, dump it, Right to my guy. Now I know any defensive-minded coach in here is going, Sean, that play's illegal. The offensive line is way too far downfield. And you're right. You're actually 100% right. And we got flagged on it, and that's why we don't do it anymore. But it was just an example. It's just an example that doesn't always have to be a screen concept. You can throw the ball downfield. You can throw the ball downfield even on these. We like to do it more with outside zone. If, if Lee's teaching a concept that we don't climb that fast, all right? Oftentimes we climb really fast with our whole line, so we can't do that. But if you have a running concept where your offensive line is slow to gain yards, is slow to go downfield, you can throw vertical passing concepts or at least quick game concepts off this and still reach the end, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so to finish, I think if, if your quarterback, if you can base your offense off your quarterback understanding all the options and all the possibilities of this group of concepts, then you can, especially on first down, notice how a lot of my examples were first and 10. When you get their base defense, you can change the base defense or get yourselves in high percentage plays to get four plus, which is the whole goal. If we're getting four plus as an offense on first down, consistently we're in good shape. We're in really good shape. And when you, when you understand all the complexities and all your options in this, it makes it easier. Quarterback is never easy. It's not, it's a tough position. But when you can do stuff like this, throwing a hitch to a corner that's eight yards off to the boundary is easy, or easier. You have to see it, you have to execute, okay? But if anybody's trying to adopt the, the spread or the spread zone, really make sure that your quarterback has options and teach them the options and teach them how to take advantage of it. Because as an OC, you're going to get yourselves in a lot of second and shorts and second and mediums, and that's where everybody likes to be. Okay? That's my time. Here's my shameless plug. Okay? We're going to have lunch. And then if you guys have any questions, I'll have it for you. Uh, I'll be.
uh, enthusiastic to answer after lunch, after I get a coffee. Okay? Thank you, guys.